performance, the whole thing was just incredible. Is, could you describe a little bit about how much rehearsal time? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, known uh, for being um, a sweet, nice, hard-ass director. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with the belief in the iceberg theory of theatrical production, that is, most of what you do is not seen by the audience. It's just the tip. And if you, if you show a lot based on a little, it's going to be a triangle like that, the whole thing is going to collapse. If you're like a pyramid and, or an iceberg and you only show the tip, it's going to be solid. So we convened uh, this particular group, the group of people that became the performance group in November 1967. We met first at the Tompkins uh, Square uh, Community Center, no longer exists, but the building still exists on the east side of Tompkins Square. We met two or three times uh, a week. But then in January or February, we, uh, we obtained the performing garage, uh, which was not a garage, but a, a small metal stamp factory. But when I saw it, it had to, uh, two big garbage trucks parked in it, and I felt that performing garage was a much jazzier title than performing metal stamp. <laughs> metal stamping factory. Although, right now, I guess metal stamping factory, because Andy Warhol was there, we could have had our factory, he could have had his, but anyway. Uh, then we could rehearse all the time. And we rehearsed on the average of uh, five to six hours a day, usually eight after, late afternoon into the evenings and all the weekends. And we rehearsed. Uh, at least six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. And we rehearsed January, February, March, April, and May. So five months, uh, six days a week, six or so hours a day. A lot of it was not about the play. A lot of it was basic training. Uh, exercises that I learned from uh, Jurja Grotowski, whose uh, workshop, first workshop in New York, I took in October, November, at the same time as I was forming the performance group. Stuff that I brought with me from New Orleans, where I had I headed the New Orleans group and I had worked at the Free Southern Theater and exercises that I knew from there. Uh, some exercises I devised. Uh, Linda Gates is sitting in the back row there. You might want to ask her some questions. She did vocal training uh, with the group. We also used some vocal techniques of Kristen Linklater. And uh, we, uh, there was an intensive vocal training, uh, both of voice and speech, the difference being voice uh, being really the underlying, you know, I could talk like this for an endless amount of time because I do diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, I uh, have practiced yogic breathing. I practice the stuff that Linda uh, taught. Uh, there's no constriction in my throat unless I want to have a constriction in my throat. So uh, uh, a lot of that uh, training is very, very, very <coughs> necessary. And it's the basis upon which things are built. And, and it also, since we began to work and uh, did a lot of uh, 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 psychophysical interactions, uh, they also uh, led to uh, intimacy, but then there's a guy named Larry Sacro who later went into the theater, but at that time was running um, therapy at Daytop Village, which was a drug rehabilitation, and I was interested in confrontation psychology. In other words, uh, uh, get your anger out! You remind me of my father! <laughs> Some things like that. And, um, and, and uh, so I asked Larry to come down and to run uh, uh, workshops with us like he did with the uh, drug uh, addicts uh, who were recovering, which was a lot about removing repressions to expression, uh, uncovering early memories, not in a Stanislavskian way, which is uh, kind of in a certain sense passive, uh, but really through active confrontation. Uh, uh, with my belief also in Brecht's theories that the smallest social unit is two, not one. I think maybe we've moved away from that uh, these days. So there was a lot of that kind of work which meant that these people, the people in the group, we knew each other very, very well. We knew our fantasies, we knew our early life experiences, we knew what we thought about each other, which ranged from uh, affection and love to hatred, from anger to joy. Uh, uh, we knew each other uh, uh, on the sensual level, we knew each other on the social level, we hung out together. There's a lot of uh, mutual knowledge that is seen in this uh, film that you wouldn't know as such, but uh, uh, we knew uh, the buttons to push for Bill uh, Shepard, and, 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 and Finley knew, you know, these things. So there was training at, at the technical level, there's training at the vocal level, 
There was training at the physical level, there was training at the psychophysical level, and there was training at the social level. All of that intensive. So I would say about 75% of the work is that basic training and 25% is mise-en-scene. Uh, and then in the mise-en-scene itself, that is what they're doing. There are a number of improvisations and textual constructions. And my job as the director, I'm always, I don't know how you, up you are with theater jargon, but a dramaturg is the person who puts the text together and is responsible for that. I'm always my own dramaturg. And I'm almost always my own designer. I'm not the executor of the design, but I say I want two towers, I want this, this, and this. I want carpets, I want rugs. So I have people to execute the designs, uh, but I always describe the designs in quite some detail. I'm not shy about giving credit, but the fact is that it, the, the conception, I'm not interested in the designer's conception. So Jerry Rojo, uh, not very interested, Jerry Rojo worked with me in New Orleans on several produ on a production, and I asked him to do this one, and Michael Kirby was my friend. And I said, the way I mean I work in design, I said, I want two opposing towers, the Towers of Thebes. So Kirby sketched out what the towers were like. I liked it, and Rojo technically made them so that they could sustain all this weight of people on top of them without toppling over, et cetera, and go, uh, they're very brilliantly constructed with internal bracing, and they go from floor to ceiling. But, uh, so I, I took a lot of time to make the text out of what improvisations the author, the actors did, and also from the Arrowsmith translation of uh, the Baki by Euripides. But there's also a little fragment of Antigone that Pentheus says, and that little uh, uh, stand with me in a storm of spears and so on, is something that Crayon says where he's talking about you have to obey the law, and that Shepherd brought in, and I accepted it as a uh, little extra piece that wasn't in the Baki. I think you had a question there, yes? Was that you already asked that? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. And then there appeared to be uh, audience participation. Oh, there certainly the, was. The yeah. degree yeah. of actuality and the degree of theatrical, and if it was the same during the play, not being filmed. Yeah, there and was. How no, long was the run? There was no theatrical audience participation. All the audience participation was actual. We never planted anybody in the audience. We never said beforehand, "Do this." We never handed out cards. It's it's. So it was chancy uh, whether they would participate, but they always did. Just so like uh, the Roots are doing this uh, 40 years later, and uh, people in Austin are jumping in there, and nobody's telling them to. I mean, you have to be trained about what we're asking. It's not shy. It's like saying, holding out your hand, and, 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 and you know, come dance with me, or uh, those kind of things. And so what do you want to know about that? How much in the film? I was curious if, if during the play it was the same. It's basically during the play was the same. It got a little hotter during the play uh, because first of all in the second night's filming all the lights were on and the kind of stuff we were doing is better to be done in a dimmer light. Uh, also there's no doubt that the cameras were some degree inhibiting uh, on the audience if not on the uh, performers. Uh, I don't remember whether we must have gotten everybody in the room to sign releases. I can't believe we didn't.